Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about traumatic brain injury and what allows us to recover from that injury, the plasticity response of the brain. A traumatic brain injury, or a TBI, is an injury that's caused by some sort of external force. Some sort of blow to a head, whether it's in a car accident, playing soccer, getting hit in the head, or falling down. There are also TBIs that are caused by penetrating injuries, maybe a gunshot, or um, like Phineas Gage who had the railroad tie go up his head. These are serious injuries and can lead to serious complications or even death. We're going to focus on a more mild TBI, which is also caused by an external force or external blow to the head, which you probably commonly know as a concussion. So this is considered a mild traumatic brain injury or TBI. Now these are normally minor and the individual typically makes a full recovery, but they need to be taken seriously. These include blows to the head, whether it's in sports or a car accident. Um, there's often a loss of con consciousness or an altered state of consciousness. And there are signs to look out for, um, like a headache, different sized pupils, loss of memory. There are different tests that coaches, trainers, and even doctors do to assess for a concussion. And if you've ever had one, you know it's not fun. So I've taken training for concussions, I've coached soccer, and I've um, been team moms for softball, so I've had to do concussion trainings. I've read about concussions in textbooks, I've talked about concussions for years in my psychobiology class, but until my daughter had one a couple years ago, I don't think I really fully understand them, understood them. So she was hit in the back of the head with a softball, it's a long story, I won't give you the details of that, but she's a pitcher and something wasn't done correctly. And so she got hit with a ball in the back of the head at a very close range. So she went to the trainer, got cleared, and I got home really late that night. And when I was talking to her, her story just didn't make any sense. So the next day she got up, she went to school, and she called me in her first period crying because her head hurt so bad. Well, come to find out, she didn't have a clear memory on what had happened. The story she told me was not at all what the story, what had actually happened, and that's really a common symptom of a concussion, short-term memory loss. She was lucky, her symptoms subsided after a week, but it was a week of you know, not being able to, to read her um, for assignments, not being able to, you should be on your, your phone texting because that's not good for your um, brain. Your brain needs to recover and heal, basically. Like I said, she was lucky. Her symptoms subsided within a week, but we've known other girls that have had headaches, dizziness, nausea, double vision for months after their traumatic brain injury. What's even worse is a second hit. So a second hit, especially if you haven't allowed time to recover, can cause permanent damage. So after one, the brain should heal, but repetitive blows can lead to long-term damage, something that may not even show up to, for years. One condition that you might be seeing more often in the news is called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Now, while we don't have the time to go into all the details on this, I just wanted to bring that to your attention and the seriousness of concussions. So what allows the brain to recover after traumatic brain injury or another type of injury is the plasticity in the brain. So plasticity allows for the recovery of function after brain or spinal cord injury. For example, if you've known someone who's had a stroke and maybe they lose the ability to speak for a while or they use the ability to use their arm or their leg on one side of their body, not always, but in some cases over time, that loss, that loss is recovered. And that is due to the amazing ability of the brain called plasticity. So it used to be thought that the brain was pretty static and unchanging. We know we're born with pretty much all the cells we're ever gonna have, 86 billion neurons. But we also thought that once the connections formed, that was it. We now know that plasticity is induced by experiences as well. So it's involved in learning and memory, strengthening connections that are used and weakening those that aren't used. We also know that there is a limited amount of neurogenesis in the brain, and this is the production of new neurons from immature cells. These cells are called stem cells. So that's what you see up here. You see a fertilized ovum turning into a cluster of cells called a blastocyst. And that one of those cells can be taken and then that is a stem cell that can turn into any, really any type of cell in the body. So they're immature cells that can replace old and dying cells. 
And this blastocyst can actually go on and continue to develop and, and divide and end up being a, an embryo. Um, just taking one cell out doesn't um, destroy the integrity of that blastocyst. So these immature cells that replace old and dying cells, we have them in a lot of our organs, but we didn't think we had them in the brain. And now we know that in certain areas like the hippocampus and the olfactory bulb, that we do have a limited amount of neurogenesis that occurs, and that is also part of the plasticity response of the brain, not only in response to injury, but also in response to learning and memory and new experiences. Thank you for listening.